contractually obliged to say. Buckle up, everyone. It's showtime. to as the anal bleaching capital of the world. Look me in the I should remind you this is a no smoking bus. Unless of course it's medical marijuana, then you're all right. On your right, you'll see the world-famous Gentry Manor Hotel, a legendary party hangout for actors and rock stars and people trying to have sex with actors and rock stars. Built in 91, it's been the scene of some classic Vinewood scandals over the years. One of my personal favorites was Al DiNapoli's overdose in 2002 after a chimpanzee blasted an eight ball up his rear door with a water pistol. <laughs> Fantastic! They say that on any given day, there are at least two dead party girls in the trash cans round back. Isn't that great? Okay, smartphones at the ready, celeb spotters. We are now approaching the legendary nightclub, The Dungeon Crawler. Opened in 1996, the club is famously owned by actor Bruce Spade, who has a custom-built elevated VIP table so that he looks the same height as everyone else. It remains one of Vinewood's hottest night spots for the rich and famous to do drugs and date rape impressionable fans. Play your cards right, and that could be you! The Dungeon Crawler was in the news again recently when comedian Morgan Chester allegedly ran over a doorman in his SUV for not laughing at one of his jokes. Oh, and now a treat for you closet glam rockers on board. We're coming up to the infamous Tequila La Rock Bar. Back in the day, this was a restaurant run by the mob until it got shut down over the Adam's apple in the soup controversy of 1982. It reopened as the Tequila La Bar in 1983 and soon became a mecca for hair metal bands and fans from across the country. It's rumored that the Love Fist song Dangerous Bastards was written about a night they partied here on Mescaline with some transgender twins. The now this house private residence of action movie director Mark Faustenberg. Faustenberg still maintains he was out of town when a 15-year-old Mexican girl was found dead in his pizza oven in 2007. The case was settled out of court and all charges were dropped. The girl's family now live on the next street. So this is the house of television exercise guru, The Craze. You might have seen him degrading himself recently on Rehab Island. Do any of you remember the 80s? Huh, strange times. People didn't go to the gym back then. They did jumping jacks in front of the TV in leg warmers and headbands. The craze swapped his gold lame leotard for a crack pipe in the 90s, but is reportedly now clean and in the best shape of his life. That's Vinewood's code for, <laughs> he's trying to make a comeback. Is the home of celebrity wild child Martha Term. Daughter of 70s comedy star Joni Term, Martha spent her teens partying on booze, her early 20s partying on coke, and her mid-20s staring at her shoes on heroin. Her tell-all autobiography about the difficulties of growing up really rich in Vinewood only sold 30 copies last year. Was a member of the jury in the 1991 movie Last Will and Testament. Th they cut my line. Just up ahead is another place to see and be seen in Rockford Hills. The Richmond Hotel, an iconic entertainment industry hangout. Sleazy producer types have been promising to make young girl stars here for over a hundred years now. Not gonna lie, I did some shameful things in that lobby bar in my youth, but I've put that period of my life behind me now. Is everyone having fun? Yo, what's up, man? Here you can see the landmark Weasel Theater, which was opened here in Morningwood in 1930. Some of the biggest movies in history have premiered at this theater, including Blue Blood, Shoulder of Orion, and The Many Wives of Alfredo Smith. You might remember the controversial premiere of the gladiator comedy Lions and Donkeys in 1984, when star Chip Hampton walked up the red carpet with two slaves in chains.
Count yourselves lucky, my prescription just got renewed this morning. <laughs> Just up ahead on the right is where Delancey Medua's septum fell out after a ketamine party. And now to our left, ladies and gentlemen, is the famous Richard's Majestic Studios. The product placement for classics like Nelson and Naples and Rum Runner and the not-so-classics like Vinewood Zombie and Shoulder of Orion 2 was shoehorned into the final edits right behind those very gates. Everyone has a favorite Solomon Richards movie. An American divorce really helped me through a difficult time when I was bankrupting my first husband. Oh, come on. Don't people in the Midwest watch movies? You must have seen Defender of the Faith. No? Wow. Tough crowd. Remember, these people are rich and beautiful. That makes them better than us. Hey, girl. I'm you in the world. Call me at the place tonight. I hear you. Do you think we'll see Laszlo? So goofy? Mom, I'm fine. Listen, we don't need to talk. This is so no, interesting. I'm not gay. Keep those cameras out and fingers on the trigger. Celebs are skinny and fast. To the left, you'll see a spot where a pizza boy claims that Play PG Jackson asked him to remove his shorts. Okay, people, get those cameras out. This is Portola Drive. You won't get a better chance to spot a celebrity in its natural habitat. As you can see, the recession hasn't hit this part of town very hard. These are some of the most offensively high-end designer stores in the country. And now, some fun trivia for you. There have been a number of movies shot on Portola Drive, mostly awful ones about rich idiots, including the blockbuster 2005 romantic comedy, Shoe Whore, that's credited with sending women's rights back 50 years. The store we're passing now is where British star Charlotte Crown was caught on film in the changing room, eating and purging the same burrito over and over again, <laughs> just like a dog. This is the Epsilon Center. Anyone with red hair, please cover it for your own safety. If you really want to meet a famous celebrity, this place is packed full of them. Take an introductory course. It, it changed my life. Kiss love. You'll recognize this stretch of road from those videos of Jill von Krastenberg with the Romanian shot put team. And here is City Hall. This is where the mayor's office is, if any of you care. You might recognize this building from the 20-minute final dogfight to save Earth in the movie Invasion Los Santos. So stressed out. You have no idea. This job is killing me. I'm working with Clay Jackson. Talk about high maintenance. The next corner is where actor Scott Stevens famously prolapsed after a failed party trick.
Laszlo was arrested for masturbating with an eggplant and shouting at women. That happened right here. And here we have the beautiful Oriental Theater. Riots broke out on the theater's opening night in 1928 as desperate fans tried to get upskirt shots of the legendary silent movie star Miriam Turner, much like you're doing today, except with really heavy cameras. My daughter tells me it isn't politically correct to say Oriental anymore, but considering some of the other common terms for Asians in the 1920s, the name could have been a lot worse. There's a saying that to go to Los Santos and not see the Oriental Theater is like going to China and not visiting a burger shop. You know, I've never really understood what that means, but... Here we are, back on the strip. As they say in Vinewood, that's a wrap, folks. I hope I managed to take your minds off the economic downturn for just a little while. I'd like to remind any Europeans that 1% is an insult, not a tip. Enjoy the rest of your vacation.